Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Biz Chicks TV. We're here. It's Thursday. So, of course, we're talking happy, healthy habits with Robin Shimizu and friends. Robin's unable to be with us today. She may be joining us over on Facebook in the chat if she's able. But today, she has lined up one of her wonderful guests, Cesar Figueroa is with us today and he is going to be talking to us about um, one of the things that is is really prevalent uh, today and that is back pain and how to get rid of it. So Caesar is a mind and body wellness coach and he's been with us previously but I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself and then we're going to get into what to do about back pain. How you doing this morning? <laughs> I'm doing really well, Terry. Thank you very much for having me on again. Uh, yeah, and this you know, back pain is kind of a nagging injury that I think a lot of, of us suffer through, or you know, it prolongs into like a chronic pain for long periods of time, and we don't really know how to get, say, rid of it or heal it um, mm -hmm. through traditional ways of, of say, medicine or uh, you know, of traditional ways of healing. Usually doctors will send them, send people to like a physical therapist first, they'll do yes. all this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it doesn't really solve the the problem. Ah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, a little bit about myself. I, I'm a mind and body wellness coach. You know, I started off in the fitness industry 15 years ago and um, it's evolved to more a holistic approach to uh, happy, helping people get healthier through, you know, this whole integration of mind, body, and even soulful work. So um, I'm really excited, I'm passionate about what, how I take this approach and help people with. Um, I used to be really shy about it or like, you know, try to just call myself a fitness coach that does something a little different. Uh -huh. But now it's like, yeah, I'm totally okay with calling myself a wellness coach, you know, and, and really proud of what my little niche is um, as far as how to take that approach to to helping people feel better. Okay, now at some point we're going to want to know how to get in touch with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can talk about that later, but don't let me forget because I know after we get all these nuggets today, we're going to probably want to book an appointment, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Yeah, and my website's the, it's up now. My new one is up. Oh, now. good. Yeah. So good. So maybe we'll be able to put that in the chat later. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, all right. Tell us a little bit about how to approach healing back pain, Caesar. Yeah, yeah. Approach. So the first thing is, um, is I'm gonna break it down into these mind, body, soul, or mind, body, spirit. I'm gonna use the word soul, spirit, and energy interchangeably. So what? just in case people have, you know, some kind of um, history behind those words or if they feel uncomfortable with using a certain word, I'm just going to interchange between soul, spirit and energy for that, that piece. But mm -hmm. first, I'll start off with the body, because um, that's kind of how I came into this and is approaching it through just the physical realm or the physical body. Right. My back hurts. What do I do about it? Um, doctor says my you know, I have scoliosis or I have a bulging disc and stuff like that. So people don't really know what that means. All they feel is pain all up and down their back. And even most of the times they'll experience sciatica, right? Where they feel it all the way down their leg, up down to their feet. Mm. So there's a lot of reasons why this could happen. Um, most of the reasons is uh, that if you look at the, the back structurally, right? It has natural curves and Sometimes one of those vertebrae is pushing up against one of the nerves, one of the spinal nerves that goes up and down your back. And so that it's pushing up against the nerve and it sends the signal that it's painful. It's, it's, it's not clear, it doesn't have a clear pathway. So therefore wow. that's why we experience pain on the say physical level. Um, so that, that said is a lot of us, especially in this country, we're, we're overweight. And so mm. our bellies will stick in that and it this puts a lot true. of pressure on your back, right? So uh -huh. is if you feel weight pushing this way, right, the back has to compensate and keep it together 
So therefore, it's taking a lot of pressure, and that's when it starts putting pressure on that nerve that runs through. Um, and that's where we experience pain. So one thing is is the tackling is the weight part, right? And that comes with, again, say a whole holistic approach of using nutrition, using uh, physical things, which I'll, I'm gonna go over a couple little things. Um, one thing is to, if people have heard of myofascial release or foam rolling. Um, nah. Oh, foam, no. did you say foam rolling? Yes. Oh yes, I know. I know that what that fancy name was, but <laughs> <laughs> so okay. yeah. So the fancy name myofascia means like it's the covering sheath of the vulva muscles in our bodies, and so mm -hmm. that uh, is very important to have that hydrated and lubricated so that the signals throughout our bodies are are just rapid firing, getting you know blood flow to where they need to go. So mm -hmm. all of our muscles have this covering called myofascia. And so this th form of therapy is to say, it's called myofascial release, is to basically add a little bit of touch and massage to the area so that it could stimulate some blood flow and get nutrients in there to go in there and heal whatever's going on. Mm. I um, learned from this teacher who doesn't use a lot of foam rollers. She uses these uh, like therapeutic um, call uh, orange balls that they're by the brand is called franklin method and they're like a physical therapy type of uh clinic or website and i could send the link as well but these if you notice that a foam roller is kind of hard right that foam they come in different levels but some of them are really get really hard but what you want to do is get something like this that has some give to it right and so that way you want to you want to match say the the muscle that you're trying to release that's really tight in your back mm -hmm. you want to match it with something softer right you want muscles to be to have give as well you don't want muscles to be hard because otherwise the hardness means more stagnation more um not, not as fluid right it can't move as well it's like rock solid hard so we want something to be flexible and have give so that's what you want to meet it with something that's flexible and has give as well Okay, um, we, we got a couple of people in here. We have Maureen and Jill, they're watching. And mm -hmm. um, Jill's from the breathing space, so I know she's interested. And Maureen is very much into fitness, so I know so, they're understanding this language. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is enough. You know, I need to explain a little bit more, but I'm gonna, I'll demonstrate just real quick um, how to use this. So, let me see if I can hop on my table back here and okay. so all i would do is place the ball underneath say the back of my hips okay okay and then you want to have your knees bent a little bit and then you put allow the pressure to be on and you've got to just roll out side to side okay you want to get just deep back here underneath the hips so it starts releasing everything in the back so you kind of just move the ball around little by little and it's very important for you to, you know, you, sometimes you might, if something's really tight, you might start feeling that sensation of pain come in. And um, and usually what we do, we, we tense up. We say uh, like, that hurts, right? Yeah. And that's the first thing where we go wrong <laughs> is where we say that that hurts. And the reason for that is that since everything's connected and if I'm putting pressure on a certain spot and it's sore and if I tell myself ow pain hurt then basically you're telling your mind that this sensation that you're experiencing right now is similar to all the other times you've said ow pain hurt right so say okay. something that happened a long time ago say you were in a car accident um, and you, you hurt your back and you always say ow my back hurts I'm in pain Right. So it's going to take you back to that incident, to that same energetic charge that you're feeling of pain. And so it keeps you stuck there. Mm. So th therefore, I, I teach people to start changing their language around using this. So saying instead of saying, ow, that hurts, it's painful. Say the words like, oh, wow, that's a sensation. That's an intense sensation. Or that's wow. That's that's something that really feels I could really feel that a lot. So you're just acknowledging the feeling, but you're not 
creating a story behind it. Okay. So, All right. Now, Maureen is asking about this ball. She says, uh, please share the link for the ball. Mm -hmm. And she asks, uh, she, she says, some of the, the foam rollers are soft. Yeah. Um, I, the ones I've used were not, but then they were at the gym. Okay. So. No, there, there's like, different types of, of foam rollers. And so I'm not putting foam rollers down, but I, I, most mm -hmm. of the that I see at the gym or something, they're really hard. And they're pretty they're hard. hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they do have there's a lot of softer ones that they sell. So okay. yeah, foam rollers are good. What's good about the balls is that it's a smaller surface area, meaning it could you could get to little spots better. Ah uh, right, than, than using a foam roller because the foam roller will take over a big area. Of space. Yes, it will. All right. So yes, and then they come in different sizes, right? Like I have uh, a couple of those bigger ones, and then I have this like it's called a pill ball. Oh and uh -huh. a little huh. bit of a dip here. So this one feels really nice on the neck and shoulders, right? And again, I've never seen that one like that. Yeah. Okay, so it's called a pill ball. Well, I think this this is what my girlfriend called it. I don't know if it's called a pill uh, ball. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a pill, you know. It does look like a pill. <laughs> yes, it does. So. Well, well, uh, we have a comment here from Jill. She's saying, "Yes, that important mind body memory about pain, noticing the sensation and letting it go." And letting go of that story. So, you know, I guess flipping the script on how we react to things is what, exactly. what I heard you say. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that is, that's Good. how I explain Good. it. <laughs> Am I simplifying it too much? No, I think that's perfect, you know. That's okay. The way you said it. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, no, oh. no, I was going to ask you to go on. Okay, go in more. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the say things that we could do on a physical level is that the the movement piece, movement of physical energy, right, getting fluid and nutrients back into the body to heal, um, and it feels really good. The other one um, I want to challenge people to do is just to do a squat, and so when you do a squat, I'll well, take it. You won't be able to see me if I let my jump on this table. Okay. <laughs> so you want to get be able to drop down to a full deep squat here. And I wasn't able to do this right off the bat. And even in early in my career, I wasn't able to get this low. But it takes practice to be able to drop down this low. You want to make sure that your feet are flat on the ground, including your heels. Okay. And then from here, you could just move around. But basically what this does, if you look at me from the side, right, it, it'll start putting uh, some more flexibility into my spine. So when I stand mm -hmm. up, okay, you can see my spine roll and its natural curvature. And if you look at babies when we're born, they, they, they could play like this all day, right? It's yes. our natural form of being able to move. So um, there's a movement coach that I follow. His name's Ido Portal. And he challenges people to do that squat seven minutes a day. And you don't have to do all seven minutes in a row, but just to do it throughout your day. And uh -huh. uh, you see this a lot in Eastern cultures. They'll, that's how they rest. They'll just pop a squat wherever they're at. And that's how they're resting, you know? Oh, and you know, I never thought that that would be good for the back to yeah. just but it makes sense because it affects your flexibility. Yeah, yeah. And not everyone's, obviously, you're not going to be able to do that if you haven't done it before in a while. You're not going to be able to do that right off the bat. So usually I have my clients hold on to something and start squatting down, putting more and more and more pressure on their hips and heels as they go down. So it just takes a little bit of practice. But, you know, the more we practice something, the better we get at it. And you'd be surprised of how much that relieves your back pain just by wow. allowing more fluidity through the back. I am surprised that a squat <laughs> could, make a, could make a difference in my pain levels if I yeah. have them. Um, and uh, Robin's in the house. Yeah. You know? Hey, Robin. <laughs> I'm just going to give a shout out to Robin. <laughs> and Maureen mm -hmm. says this is great information. So, so my question to you, um, Caesar, is, OK, so it's one of the couple of ways that you've suggested to alleviate pain is 
to use that ball and to do the squats. Okay, so now what if we are not able to do that? Is there something else we can do? Um, meaning like um, to help stand and like if it's that bad, whether you, you can't walk or stand or yeah. Yes, um, let's say let's say you're confined. If you're confined to a chair, is there anything you can do? Like if you're in a wheelchair or you're um, on a scooter or things like that, where you don't have a lot of mobility, mm -hmm. you have less mobility. Let's put it that way, less mobility than what you mentioned. Like we can't hop up on the table. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was interesting. Yeah, there's so many more things you could do. So say even in, in a chair, I could go ahead and add a twist. As long as my spine is just nice and tall, I uh -huh. could add a twist here, and it's basically like rinsing out the muscles in your uh -huh. around your spine, right? So, so, yeah, you just take a twist there, hold it, and again, a lot has to do with more has to do with the breathing part and uh -huh. the talking to yourself about whether it hurts or if it's just a sensation. Right. Ah, Jill would love this. She's all about the breathing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's one form. Uh, I'm going to get into a little bit more about the, the using the mind piece and okay. uh, the energy piece. All right. So the mind piece is the self-talk, right? It's, it's also, uh, good. I talk about the mind. These, these are all kind of blend in together. So they're not just one thing like I'm going to focus on the body, the physical part. I'm going to only focus on the mind part. They all work synergistically. They all work together to bring healing. Mm -hmm. So um, the mind is the self-talk to telling yourself that it's a sensation, not a pain, not a, you know, um, another term I use is opportunity for growth, right? Like some people, my clients will say, oh, I'm weak or I'm not strong or, you know, they'll start talking negative about their bodies. And I say to them, use, oh, that means that you have an opportunity for growth in that area. So oh. recently my client said that it was it's too long of a phrase to remember and she made it down to an OFG. So I say, OFG, you know, opportunity for growth. Oh, so okay. Start changing your <laughs> <the> language. <laughs> um, so then uh, I also teach a, a practice called I rest meditation or um, yoga nidra, it's been called. And mm -hmm. it's basically you're in a relaxed posture using, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with restorative yoga, but in restorative yoga, you just use props, pillows, blankets, all kinds of things to just get into a really relaxed posture where you're just, where your body could relax and that way your mind has a chance to relax. So um, yes. you take that approach. So you get the body relaxed in a nice comfortable posture and then I guide people through uh, a meditation and basically goes through different centers of the body and say, like, relax your hand, relax your thumb, you know, and through, throughout the whole body. By the end of the meditation, you just if you go into a state of uh, between wakefulness and sleeping. And we call that the uh, theta brainwave state or even the alpha brainwave state. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned it last time, but this is the area where we can reprogram our mind. Ah. We're in the theta or the alpha brainwave states. Um, from the ages of zero to seven, we live in the theta states. And we're just taking in all this information of how to react and how to be in our world from the age of zero to seven. And we're, in, we're, we're operating in this theta brainwave state. So after that, we start operating more uh, when we wake up uh, to the beta, right? So right now we're talking in beta. And uh, that's why I'm such a huge proponent of the first couple hours upon waking to not digest or not put any outside information uh, from the world to you because you're, you're very vulnerable in those first couple hours upon waking and also the, first, the last couple hours upon sleeping uh, because this, we, our bodies naturally start, um, well, they, they go from, say, the sleeping state and then they go into the theta, and then they go into the alpha, and then finally into the beta, which we're conscious and we're talking normally, right? So that's so the, uh, crucial. So it sounds like because we're in a state of drowsiness, 
we have to be a little more aware. Well, yeah, you got to be aware of like what's around you during that state, right? If I if I wake up and I turn on the news, all that news, even though I'm not really paying attention to it, I know some people like put on the news just to have it in the background. Mm -hmm. We're still receiving that information, especially since we're in that theta or alpha brainwave states that that information is just coming through with no filter. Right? And it's kind of reaffirming our beliefs in our mind. So that's why it's so crucial when, um, or that's why I teach IRS meditation is because we get a chance to reprogram our mind with positive messages saying mm. like I, I guide people through like, all right, now feel as if your body's really healthy. You have no more back pain. Uh, you are walking, you know, with a strut and confidence, you know? So I basically help people conjure up those feelings within them. That's telling the mind that the, everything's okay. And if it's not okay, let's go in there, send those sen signals, to go ahead and correct it and fix it and alleviate this problem that this person has. Oh, wow. Well, we got some comments over here. Oh, great. And uh, <laughs> um, Robin wanted to know, she says, interesting, do you squat and stay squatted or go up and down, she's saying. Yeah, you, you stay know, squatted. Table for, uh, comment came through, but I didn't think it was timely since you were up in the air at the top. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, it's not good. Yeah, the uh, you definitely want to stay in the squat for as long as you can. You know, like um, again with practice, you stay be able to stay longer and longer. Um, now I could probably stay there at least a couple minutes. You know? So <laughs> okay, yeah. and then um, Robin saying, <coughs> "Yay, Jill <coughs> and Yoga Nindra too." Um, Jill does um, Yoga Nindra also. Uh -huh. She was excited about the fact that uh, nice to meet another yoga practitioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it did so much for me. Um, it was I started taking a class on Friday evenings mm -hmm. at a yoga studio, and uh, what yoga did for me it was a movement piece that helped me just focus on one thing, right? And then I found out that there's this type of yoga, yoga nidra, which is just called it literally translates to yogic sleep, but you're not technically you're not sleeping, right? You're in that drowsy state. Mm -hmm. um, and it just helped me so much for my whole week, right? I would go every Friday night and it would just be my little thing where I could just relax and rest. And the only thing that really helped me calm, ease my nervous system, and I wouldn't be so anxious. So, you know, if it did so much for me, I, I that's basically what I do is like I learn something and then I teach it learn it, teach it, if it helps me, if it's going to help someone else. So, yeah. Okay, well, well Jill says uh, rest is great for PTSD also. Mm -hmm. And I know that when we went to her studio, she um, had us use blankets and pillows. Mm -hmm. So when you mentioned that, I said, oh, so that's what we were doing. <laughs> Yeah, you're doing restorative type of yoga, yeah. Yes, restorative stuff. How oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, all I know is it was very relaxing. Good, uh -huh. good. And it was, it was a wonderful experience. So, guys, you know, if you're looking for uh, something to re relax the mind and the body, that, that was a winner. I would check out the breathing space and check in with Caesar and see what's yeah, going on. I teach a class every Friday afternoons uh, during that lunch hour, like 1230 to 130 mm -hmm. at a studio called Delta Mind Body Center. And so uh, where is that located? Um, it's located downtown on 10th Street uh, between okay. between U and T. Is, uh, Got you. So if, if you are a state worker, yeah, a state worker. Yeah. You might want to check out Caesar, particularly if you have something that you want to work on. Yeah, exactly. We have a variety of classes there, uh, different teachers. We, we're all independent contractors there. So we rent out our space, bring in our own people or um, to teach out of there. So it works out well. Um, but yeah, lastly, before we get off, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the energetic piece. And again, okay. that all these kind of intertwine, they're not just one thing. Um, and so last time I was on here, I talked, I tried to talk a little bit about energy, but it's such a like, it's a concept that we still really don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. And it's really 
really challenging to communicate that through uh, to other people. Um, so again, playing on this thing of um, using the brainwave states, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're in that brainwave state, the drowsiness state, you're a lot, um, say, we want to call it more fluid, right? Or more permeable to information. So with the energy, ah. piece, yeah, with the energy piece, um, you want to think about everything being a form of energy. And I think last time I said we're, we're all basically swimming in the same pool. So if we were swimming in a pool or deeply submerged in a pool, every there's you think of the water as energy, right? And everything around us is energy. And then our bodies or even ourselves and everything we see in our physical reality starts condensing down into, you know, smaller, tighter packets of energy, of information. And that's how we can see things and touch things and feel like they're physical, right? Even though they're made from pure energy. If we look at it from a, a microscopic electronic level that, you know, you go deeper and deeper and deeper, go to the tiniest molecules, all you see is little things, molecules of energy vibrating. It's nothing solid. So you want to think of our bodies and our realities as condensed packets of information, condensed packets of light. And so we use this to um, see where there's no light, right? Where there's no, uh, where there's stagnation. So whenever we feel some pain, discomfort, some sensations that, uh, you know, are uncomfortable, then we're probably experiencing some kind of stagnation. There's a stuck of something that's not getting through, particularly with back pain, um, we're not receiving, uh, say, a breath. So my practice that I study says that we exhale and express through the front of the body. And then in, in the back of the body, we inhale and receive. So it's a cycle of exhaling and inhaling, exhaling and inhaling. And if we have back pain, right, it might be because we're not inhaling enough or we're exhaling too much, right? So there's, there's a, you got to play with what the body's telling you um, and how my practice works is I go into people's wrists and I listen to their pulses. And in the pulse, it tells me where that stuck might be and in the texture or the quality of the pulse, whether it be frantic or whether it be relaxed or whether it be hard, it'll tell me okay, this is where the stuck, this is kind of what the person is experiencing, go into these flows to relieve and cause more flow, or sorry, to relieve tension and cause more flow, more cycle of breath throughout the body. Okay. Which brings, <laughs> to, which brings I get it, which brings us back to breathing. You're saying that, that um, different forms of pain are the result of something being blocked. Yes. And usually that has to do evidently with oxygen because we're talking about breathing. Mm -hmm. so as we free up space, to, or let me phrase it another way, as we unblock these things, then the airflow makes it easier for us in terms of flexibility or the release of pain or what? Makes it for the release of pain. It's, then it's, it's not literally airflow. It's a energy, right? So even though yeah. we can't see it, right? It's still, there's a flow to our body. Yeah. Um, in my practice, it, it uses touch and the feeling of the pulses. So mm -hmm. in the pulses is where uh, we feel that energy and the quality of that energy. So, you know, energies might be really hard and stagnant or some energies might be nice, you know, uh, fluffy and with like a nice rhythmic tone to it. And so, um, it's just be, being able to become aware of what state that you're in, acknowledging that state, whether uh -huh. it be a frantic state or whether it be a panic state. Um, and then uh, you go in there to relieve and, and say that everything's okay, right? Again, everything's a sensation. You know, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to relax. And everything's okay. Once you do that, things come into harmony. You'll feel the pulse go into a nice rhythmic the dun 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 pulse, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, you start feeling more and more.
relaxed, being able to uh, let go of that tension, say in the muscles. So mostly in, in with back pain, you'll feel you'll see people on the table, just like her their feet kind of sometimes twitch and then they'll relax. Right? Their bodies just kind of start relaxing and letting go and not being so tight and rigid. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this comment up from from Jill. It says Caesar's comments about the brainwave states are so important. We can be so uh, suggestible to TV commercials, radio comments, people comments, et cetera, doing certain brainwave states. So manage your own mind. So now that we're aware that we're vulnerable during those times, you're saying, you know, we need to make sure that we don't take in some unnecessary stuff that basically what takes up residence in our subconscious or gives yeah. us, what do you call it muscle memory oh that hurt <laughs> you know yeah, exactly it reaffirms the belief that there's pain there or that there's some kind of trauma there there's something's wrong right mm -hmm. and so in say looking at it at a lens of like holistically there's nothing wrong with us it's just that the layers that we've put on that we've learned how to react and be in our lives keeps us stuck and stagnant so uh, the more we practice on using these uh, modalities of say movement and uh, meditation and energy practices then we're able to um, come into relaxing and let us become aware that everything's okay right like once you get to a point where you recognize your power that everything is energy and you're going to be okay mm -hmm. even though chaos might, might be happening around you your life might be turned upside down when you come to back to the present moment and say this is only what's going around i'm still okay i'm still alive i'm here right now in this moment and everything's okay and then those things start to dissipate right yeah chaos starts to come into harmony i love it so we need to talk to ourselves more people. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. We do, we need to speak to those things. Yes, and so all of these things make sense to me because yeah. in my realm, the things that are seen are made of things that are not seen, which, you know, when you talk about the energy, okay, I can align that with what I believe. And Wonderful. then when I talk to myself, talk to my body and tell it what it's gonna do, um, this sounds like a part of what you're talking about. You know, I need to change how I speak about certain things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Our language is key because our language tells us uh, what's what our thoughts are doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. A big piece of what I I, need, I work with my clients is like trying to reframe their language. People say that they have a bad memory, right? It's like, oh, I can't remember that because I have a bad memory. Right? You're reaffirming the belief that you have a bad memory and our, your memory is fine. It's just that you keep saying to yourself, my memory is bad. And so we reframe the phrase to like, oh, uh, you know, it's not coming to me at this moment, but it will. And then I teach them to do some energy points like, you know, if you just tap your, your finger right above your lip or if you place your hand on your head that shoots energy to your brain. To mm remember things and it's it's fascinating how that works wow because i see people do this all the time and i see them do this a lot oh interesting so that's why that's why i love the practice of that i study uh with jin jitsu -jitsu because it's called the body's innate wisdom we already do these things to help us harmonize our bodies and mm -hmm. so now uh i teach it so that you can be more aware and be able to use it right away I like the idea that it really is doing something because this is sort of something we do unconscious. So we see other people do it and then we pick it up, you know what I mean? Or because I do like this from time to time when I'm trying to remember something. And I didn't know that it was actually doing something physically to put, my yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Uh huh. Yeah. No, I think that's your head on <laughs> and you're concentrating on something, trying to remember something. Helps you ah, okay. Yeah. So that is part of the innate, those innate movements 
innate movements and yeah, the body's innate wisdom, you know? Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay, Caesar. <laughs> so um, wrap this up for us, put a pretty bow on this. We okay. talked about three areas, right? Yes, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, soul, mind, body, energy. And we know that we can squat, we can twist, we can roll, <laughs> we can roll uh -huh, on that ball. Yes. Okay. Oh, Rama says, wow, innate wisdom. Look at that. She says, <laughs> wow, innate wisdom. Yeah, I know, Robin. Who knew? All the time that we were wise when we were doing these things. <laughs> yeah, wow. Um, she is. So um, I have put up here, uh, Francis put um, optp.com. Yeah. Tell about that. So that's the website where you can find all the uh, balls, the roll balls. All the equipment. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have different sizes. They have ones with little pricks on them, you know, that are good for the feet. Um, so there's, yeah, you'll see the pill ball. It's shaped a little different, good for the neck and shoulders. Um, and then uh, she just posted my website is seizyourlife.com. Um, it gives a little bit of descriptions of what I do and how I bring this together. Uh, and then, um, yeah. Is just, it, is ahead. it Contact information on the seizurelife.com if someone wanted to book an appointment. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Or okay. um, do my phone numbers directly on there. You might use right. this and all that. Yeah. So, guys, if you're looking to, to uh, connect with Caesar, you can do, can do that through his, his website. Thank you. And I just want to thank you, Caesar. You know what? Robin is always finding such great. Um, Guess what? Well, we just want to give a shout out to you. We mm -hmm. hope to see you next week. We know that you were um, indisposed today, but we thank you for tuning in from mm -hmm. your mobile location. Uh, <laughs> give our best to Fred. We want to thank Francine, who is producing the show in the background for us. She is my partner, Ms. Francine Gregory, real estate entrepreneur and tech diva. <laughs> And I want to remind everybody that there is a Woman Like Me event coming up soon. You'd want to go check that out. You see the uh, website is posted. We hope that you'll join us for that event. We're going to be there, the best chicks. Also, we just want to say thank you to Caesar. Caesar, that demonstration was amazing. <laughs> the table was in the room. <laughs> and I will be trying to... No, I will be squatting more. Often. Yay! You're already changing your language. Good. I good. will be squatting more often. <laughs> at least once a day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> which is an improvement from zero. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have anything you want to add before we go, Caesar? Uh, not that I could uh, comes to mind. You know, it's like if someone wants to take this approach, uh, I think. Uh, more and more people are becoming to take on this approach. It's more holistic. It's a bigger, you know, thing. It's not just looking at the physical component of our bodies. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, just call me up or you know message me through these uh, social media pages or my website. Fantastic. We want to thank Jill for joining us from the breathing space and Maureen and all of you who are watching on the replay. We want to say thank you and don't forget to go to the front of your own line. We'll see you tomorrow. It'll be talking tech in English. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.